Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. My name is Susie and I appreciate you so much being here with me today. If you're new here, to give you a little bit of a backstory, my husband and I remodeled his grandmother's house and we moved in here about six months ago. Um, at our other house, we had a great big garage that had all the tools and gardening stuff and stuff like that in it, but here we didn't have a place like that. So all that stuff that was in our garage over there is now in the basement of this house. We have been building a building here. It is 30 by 50 and I'm happy to say that it is finally done. My husband is happier than a pig in mud and so am I because that means we can get this basement cleared out and I can get a dedicated space for my craft room. It's really hard to do crafts when you have to hunt up all your supplies and things are here and things are there and nothing has the same place. So I'm really excited to get organized. So I was thinking about organizing my craft room and I got to looking around at some trash that I had. I mean, literal trash that was going to the garbage can and I thought I could use that. So in this video, I'm going to take actual trash and turn it into functional storage some for my craft room and some for other things. I hope you guys enjoy and this inspires you to turn some trash into functional cute storage. Thank you so much for watching. For my first trash to treasure are these Folgers coffee cans. Now we drink a lot of coffee and I had previously, like two years ago, just painted these up quickly. I didn't use good paint. I just didn't cover them really, really well. And it was right when I had got my silhouette and I really don't like this font, but we've still been using them because they're pretty functional. You know, we make a pot of coffee every day. And this is about the size we order it in now. Um, so I have three different sizes here and I thought these would make some great storage. So I just took them outside and sprayed a coat of black spray paint on them just to help the paint adhere a little bit. You could probably skip this step, especially if you're using a good quality paint like I am here, which is the Dixie Belle in drop cloth. Um, so it only took a couple of coats to cover these. Once I had them covered, I sealed them in with a polycrylic. Now, I would recommend doing a spray, but I am having a hard time finding the polycrylic spray anywhere. If you guys know where I can find any, let me know. I guess I could order it. I'm just used to getting it at Walmart and they never seem to have any. But I wanted to put the one, two, three numbers on these canisters. So I just cut down some drop cloth for the numbers and stamped using the typesetting stamps from IOD, the one, two, three, onto the drop cloth. To give these a little bit of dimension since the canisters are in drop cloth as well as the numbers, I layered in um, little pieces of burlap underneath the numbers. And to keep the burlap from fraying more than I wanted, I just took some Mod Podge and went around the edges of the burlap. And then I also glued the numbers onto the burlap using the Mod Podge. Now this doesn't look good when it's wet, but it does dry clear. And I really liked the look of these once they came out. They looked so cute. And After completely letting the numbers burlap drop cloth dry completely overnight, I just added them onto the canisters using Gorilla Glue. I didn't want to use any kind of hot glue on these since they are plastic canisters. But I really like how these turned out. And now we have some better looking storage for our coffee, filters, and sugar by the coffee maker.
Next trash to treasure storage solution, you could use any type of plastic containers. We buy these fried pork skins in bulk because we try to watch our carbs, so we eat a lot of them as just little snacks. All I did was clean them up really good, spray painted the lids in black, and then I made this vinyl transfer with my Silhouette cutting machine. You don't have to do this if you do not have a cutting machine. You have a couple of other options. Um, you could buy, easily buy stickers with a little paw print and some letters and put it on there. Or if you have a great hand for writing things, you could use a Sharpie marker. I cannot do that. My handwriting is awful. My oldest daughter can write anything in about any different font you show her and it looks beautiful. But I really like how these turned out. Um, we give the dogs a couple of treats a day, so these will be used on the regular as well. These large plastic containers can be used to hold so many things, and they're great because you can see in them and see what's there. You really wouldn't even have to put a label on them. Um, I probably will use more of these in my craft room once I empty out some. trash to treasure i'm using something everyone has in abundance cardboard boxes we're all the time getting stuff shipped we're all the time having to dispose of cardboard boxes so i thought that i would use these for some easy storage in my craft room so the first thing i'm going to do i have three different sizes i'm going to cut the lids off and just leave a box now you could reinforce the bottom of these with tape and i do recommend doing that if you're going to put anything you know slightly heavy in there for the three that i'm using it's just going to be you know some very light type storage but i still needed a box to put them in to put them up on a shelf or underneath in a shelf and i wanted to make them look cute because i have a whole idea for my craft room so i cut the lids off all three boxes and then i'm just going to wrap them in drop cloth This step was a little bit tricky, but I got it figured out. This is the first one. So this one, you know, I got better as I did the other three, but I just neatly wrapped the drop cloth kind of like I am wrapping a present. And then I just used spray adhesive to adhese the drop cloth to the cardboard box. Like I said, I get better as I go on, but you kind of get the idea. Just do it neatly and take your time. Don't get in a hurry and I really like how these look with the drop cloth. They don't look just like a cardboard box anymore. They're a little bit cute. Finally, once I got all the boxes covered, I wanted to label them, of course, so I'm going to be using the IOD typesetting stamps to put the words tape, ribbon, and fabric on these boxes. I'm using a thin mount here. This is my first time using it, but it really helps line them up and make them even. I may not be using this the correct way, but I just put the words on the box kind of where I wanted them and then laid the thin mat on top, turned it over and lined up the words on the line. And that worked out pretty good for me.
If you are a DIYer, chances are you've got plenty of empty paint cans laying around too. Somehow I uh, was only able to find one, so I'm going to be using that and another um, galvanized tin that I had bought at a thrift store. So I'm taking some air dry clay and I'm going to impress the words floral and brushes into the air dry clay using the lowercase type setting stamps. Now, I recommend rolling your clay out much thinner than I did, but this worked for the purpose that I'm using it for. And then I'm just going to cut out a square and use a spatula to lift it up. I am going to let the air dry clay dry on top of the paint can so it dries with the shape of the paint can. Now, this is not the paint can that I'm going to be using because it is actually still being cleaned out. And for the other one, I'm gonna use this galvanized bucket that I got at the thrift store, and I'm gonna put the word brushes on there using the same technique. For this one, I decided instead of putting it in the center, I'm going to lay it at the top of the bucket for my brushes. Once the air dry clay had dried a little, I adhered it to the bucket with Gorilla Glue. And then once it had dried completely and hardened, I put Duck Egg Blue by Dixie Belle on both of these items, covering inside the words as well. I really like this paint color. I'm trying to try something new. I think I'm going to make my craft room a little bit different than the rest of my house and incorporate much more color. And this is just a beautiful blue color and the Dixie Bell paint is such high quality. It covers really well. I kind of wish I had stopped there and just put some white wax on these, but I wanted to give them a really aged and used and well-worn look. So I took some antiquing wax from Waverly and I just rubbed it over it and then wiped as much back with a paper towel that I could. I like how these turned out, but I really loved the blue color. And of course this took away that blue color, but they still look aged and worn. And once the antiquing wax had dried, I went back over that with some white wax. And now these just look like really old cans. And I like how they turned out. There's a few things I would have done differently, but for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of storage containers in my craft room, these worked out great. What was your guys' favorite trash to treasure from my video today. Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again next week.